right? I'm here on time. For those that don't come regularly, I sometimes forget to come forward. But it's great to see you all. Some people only got to know us this morning when we were playing outside Lieutenant Colonel Barber's house. It's great to see you here tonight. Hope you enjoy the service with us. Just for those that aren't regularly here, on the table at the back is a sheet with all the information about what goes on here. There is also an email letter that goes out each week. If you want to give me email addresses after the service, I'll include you on that list just so that you get something every week. But there is a sheet there, a paper copy for this evening. But just to let you know uh, the things that happen regularly here, we have a service uh, on a Sunday morning at 10.30. But during the week, on a Monday, we have a cafe which serves breakfast up till 11 and then from 11 until 1 is lunch, and then a cameo club, which is on from half past 1. It's a very full day on Monday. I came along to lunch on Monday. Very nice indeed. Uh, on Thursday is parent and toddlers at 9.30 in the morning, and Friday is our coffee morning, 10 till 12, open to all as well. So Mondays and Fridays open to everyone. First Monday of the month, is the men's and ladies fellowships operate separately in this hall at 7.30. So the first one of those is Monday the 4th of October. Uh, and uh, we're looking forward to starting those up again after the summer. And then just a reminder on our harvest weekend, which is the 10th of October. I know this is very fast, but I've been told I've got to do it quickly, right? So you have to keep up. 10th of October, harvest weekend. The divisional commander is here. And we're going to, after the morning service, we'll be having lunch on the Sunday, which will be a pie and pea meal. It's a Sunday lunchtime. And there's a list over there, if you're going to come along, to write your name and what you'd like to eat from the choices that will help those that are making the lunch. If that didn't make sense, see me afterwards. May the Lord bless you. Thank you, Brian, and good evening, everybody. It is lovely to see you, to hear you. It's not lovely to wear this get-up, but that's Colin's fault. There's probably revenge from this morning, but he wants to try this microphone system out to see if it works any better. So can you all hear me? See? <laughs> right. The rest of us don't count. As long as Audrey can hear us, that's fine. Are you okay over there, Audrey? Yes? Brilliant, brilliant. And it's good to see friends that we met this morning at the, when the band was out in the glorious sunshine. Northeast of England, glorious sunshine. Not a sentence normally put together, but it was absolutely lovely. And the band sounded amazing in the open air. So it was good to see you guys. Glad that you came along. It was lovely to have some of the band playing outside. And tonight we're going to sing praises to God, a choice of songs. Um, we're going to start by singing, Guide Me With Thy Great Jehovah. This song is another one that sort of originated from the Welsh Revival. A 24-year-old Welsh preacher, Howell Harris, who stirred the land with his fervent evangelistic preaching and his use for congregational singing. One of the lives that he touched was a 20-year-old William Williams. Don't ask me why they, his mother mustn't have liked him. You don't call someone William Williams, but 20-year-old William Williams, a son of a wealthy B Welsh farmer, preparing to become a medical doctor, but on hearing the challenge of the gospel by Harris, he dedicated his life to God and Christian ministry. Williams and Harris decided to take the parish of Wales. They took the whole country as their parish, arriving around Wales, if you've been to Wales, this is a feat, about 100,000 miles on the back of a horse. I cannot imagine going over the Brecon Beacons on a horse. But that's what they did, and they became known, he became known as the sweet singer of Wales. This song is symbolic to the journey of the Israelites from Egypt to Canaan. And because of their sin, because they didn't do what God wanted them to do. They kept touring around almost for 40 years, and God provided them what they needed for their physical needs, supply of manna each day. So we're going to sing this amazing song, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, 
feed me now and forevermore. And I invite you to sing when I'll take the lead from the band and we'll sing the song straight through. Let's stand and sing, friends. Take your seats. Let's pray, shall we? Father God, we're thankful today that we can come and meet tonight and sing your praises. And Father God, I thank you for every person here tonight. I thank you for all the experiences that have happened to them in their lives, the good and the bad, because they brought them to this point in history to be singing your praises here tonight. And I just pray, Father God, that you would bless them in abundance that you would use them, that you would guide them, and you would help them day by day as they try to walk with you. So, Father God, for this hour as we meet, bless us and help us. This we ask in your dear son's name. Amen and amen. Our next song is a Salvation Army song that appeared in two musicals. Now, if you could put the... He came to give us life. Can anyone tell me what musicals there were? No, almost, no, Hosea, Hosea and Jesus spoke. It made the, the short list on Hosea, and then after the first performance, it was cut, because it was too long. The Hosea music was too long, so it was cut, and then made it back on Jesus Folk, which was premiered in 1973. Not that anyone here is old enough to remember 1973, I was only two. Elizabeth wasn't. She was older than that, but I was two. She was at school. But no one else can remember those days. But it's, it's a great song from John Gowans and um, John Larson, but it takes a verse of Scripture, John 10.10, 10, I have come that they will have life and have life in all its fullness. A great text. And you know, Gowans and Larson were a great double act, being used, both of them eventually became generals of the Salvation Army, as you know, but he came to give us life, not existence, not just going through the motions, but give us life in all its fullness. Can you remember the star cards? When you're in, when you're in uh, Sunday school, you got the star cards. I remember this one being published in the star card. That shows how sad I am. But it's a great song. It does go to a good speed. It's a bit of a tongue twister as well, but it's a good song. But it is based on Scripture, John 10.10. 10. He came to give us life in all its fullness. So my prayer for you guys is that we experience and we enjoy life to the full. So we can't, I'm sorry, but we can't sing this sitting down. So I invite you again to stand if you want to, and then we'll take the lead from the band and sing this through. Thank you.
I'm going to come down here. We would change the program a little bit um, tonight. Um, I've been blessed this weekend by having three angels staying with us. Well, Michael brought his kids, so I've got to say three angels. Michael, our, our eldest son, and he came up with his girls, and they stayed with us last night, but didn't co- want to come here this morning because they went to their army, so they went to Stockton this morning, but they wanted to come to our army to see what you guys are like. And I said, that's fine, but if you come into the army, we're going to do a song. So we're going to do a kid's song. Now, any, anyone here feeling old? No? No? So we're all, we're all young at heart, aren't you? So this is one of the kids, I put, you probably sung it, it's a Doug Hawley song, Lords of Actions, your whole body's got to move, and it's one of those songs that you're thinking, I love it or I can't stand it, and I, your head sort of sinks down into the seat. But great, great, brill, brill, wicked, wicked, skill, skill. You know that one? Brilliant use of the English language. Could it, but there's good actions. So girls, are you going to come out? And you're going to get Abby to come and help because she really needs to do the actions as well. Come on, guys. (laughs) Sorry? Yeah. So we have Aaron as our oldest. Then Isla is the most sensible. (laughs) And then this is is Sarah. What can I say about Sarah? Well, she's just Sarah. But we're going to do the action, so it's ready. It's a great, great, brill, brill, wicked, wicked, skill, skill to have a friend in Jesus. It's, it's easy. The, the catch is it goes really, really fast. And you end up, if you're not careful, you could punch the person next to you. But it's fine. It's fine. We'll come over here. We're insured. So I would encourage you to try the actions. But the health and safety warning is we're not insured if you hit anyone next to you. But it tells us in the Bible to dance before the God, holistically worshipping God. So this is sort of, yeah, we're going to have fun, aren't we? At least you could be laughing at us. But I encourage you to do the action. Same again for the band. Carefully your instruments. We're not insured if you break your instruments when you're doing the actions. But I encourage you to do the actions, unless you're feeling really, really old. But there's no one in the band who's really, really old, is there? (laughs) Okay, well, let's... Yeah, we need to stand. Again, I'm getting on your feet. Let's stand and let's sing. Thank you, Colin.
I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't watching, did the band do the actions? <laughs> it, it, it's one of those songs that you either love or hate, but the kids love it, and we've managed to get into two schools doing assemblies, and the, one of the heads said, wind the kids up, it's fine. And the deputy head was going, no! <laughs> but once you get two or 300 kids in a school assembly singing that and other types of songs, it's just amazing. Because they're singing about Jesus, they're singing how great God is, and it, it's just great fun. So thank you very much for that. Thanks, girls, for your help. Okay? I'm going to hand over now to Major Elizabeth. <laughs> she needs a moment. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Is it okay? I know David always says I don't need a mic. <laughs> oh. I think that's my exercise done for the year. What do you think? <laughs> Mind you, I think I'll need to do a little bit more before next Sunday in those tunics. Definitely. Oh. Sing to the Lord, it tells us in Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. Shout for joy. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst in ju jubilant song with music. What wonderful words from scripture. King Solomon, one of the wisest men who ever lived, once made this observation. And you'll find this in Proverbs 15. It says, a happy heart makes the face cheerful, but heartache crushes the spirit. Now, the medical profession has also long realized that happy people are the healthiest people. But how does one achieve that happiness, that joy? The child of God knows that it comes from living close to the Savior. And beyond that, joy experience should also be joy expressed. And this ought to be the true, be true in our individual lives, doesn't it? It has to be, each one of us have to feel that, as well as when we gather in our church services. True worship must have the ingredient of festal joy the Psalms insist that we burst into jubilant song with music and that we praise our God with trumpet, lute, harp, timbrel, and loud crashing cymbals. Well, we don't have the cymbals, but we have um, horns and euphoniums and cornets and basses and all those others that um, I haven't mentioned. But we have all these kind of instruments that we can help in worshiping God. Now the author and composer of this hymn that we're going to sing just now, Elton Roth, was a well-known musician of his day. And it was while assisting with evangelistic meetings in Texas on a hot summer. Have any, any, anybody been to Texas before? Yeah? 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 It gets hot, doesn't it? It gets very hot and dry. It's not just like it's humid and, you know, it's really dry and very hot. And they had um, this evangelistic meeting on a hot summer day in 1923 that the words of this music for this song um, suddenly came to him. And he says, that evening I introduced the song by having more than 200 boys and girls sing it at the open air meeting after which the audience joined in the singing. I was thrilled, he says, as it seemed my whole being was transformed into song. When our worship and personal experience are full of joy and song, it will be, it will be easier for our lives to encourage others to know this same happiness also. I have a song. Have you got a song? Have you got a song? That Jesus gave me. 
I have a song that Jesus gave me. It was sent from heaven above. There never was a sweeter melody. It's a melody of love. Wonderful words there. And the chorus says, in my heart, there rings a melody, a melody of love. So just now we're going to sing that song. And I'd like you to consider thoughtfully, are we truly happy Christians? When you come in here on a Sunday morning or whenever you come in, do you come in, oh, yeah? Do you come in like that? Oh, you know, I do sometimes, you know. <coughs> my humanity takes over. Does my life express, when people see me, do they see a happy, cheerful Christian and they want to come and know what I'm receiving from God and they want to know what is different? Does my life express the joy of the Lord? Does my church worship produce joy in my life? And if it doesn't, I pray that you will ask God to give you that which is lacking in your life and then sing joyfully as you go. In my heart, there rings a melody. There rings a melody of love. So we're going to sing this straight through and then the band will bring us their message after that song. The band are going to bring you a lovely piece of music. It's just been published uh, in the last couple of months. Uh, it's called a piece called Thy Tenderest Blessing. It's totally different to what you've been listening to already tonight. It's something you've got to listen to very, very carefully. Now the day is over, night is drawing nigh. They are the words of the song. You'll remember this or you'll listen to this carefully. It's a piece of music we haven't played before. Be prepared. Cornered section have got their work cut out. But nevertheless, it is a, a very lovely piece of music. Just relax and enjoy it.
Thank you to the band for that beautiful piece of music. One John chapter four verse nine says this: This is how God showed His love among us. He sent His one and only Son into the world that we might live through Him. We must never, we must never underestimate the power of love. Never underestimate the power of love. The divine love of God for man far excels all other forms of love. Love divine. This is another of the more than 6,500 hymns by Charles Wesley. Now this fine text written in 1747. How long is that? Anybody with the maths on? 1747? long time isn't it well it touches on various elements of Christian doctrine when you come down to the third stanza the third verse emphasizes the truth that the spirit of God indwells indwells the temple or body of each believer while the fourth stanza that's the first verse anticipates the glorious culmination of our faith when we cast our crowns before thee, lost in wonder, love, and praise. Now, although Christians may have differences of interpretation regarding the doctrine of sanctification, we can agree on this basic truth. It ought to be a normal desire for each believer to grow in gra the grace of our Lord. For me and for us, the last verse in any Christian's prayer that God would finish. Finish then thy new creation. Pure and spotless, let us be. Let us see thy great salvation perfectly restored in thee. Change from glory into glory till in him we take our place. Till we cast our crowns before thee, lost in wonder, love and praise. God's love must dominate, must dominate our hearts, our minds, and our wills. I pray that this will become increasingly true in your life and carry this portion of this song with you just now as we sing this together.
wonderful song, isn't it? Just now the songsters are going to bring their message. And maybe, songster, you can tell us what we're going to sing just now. the songsters and thank you Barry for your choice of song for this evening. You enjoyed that one? It's a, it's a good old song. It, what do you mean it's a yee-haw? <laughs> Tell you, you can't take it anywhere can you? April 1956. Can you remember it? No? No? But in April 1956 one of the staff of the Savage Army Training College on New York, his brother was seriously ill. And then a month later, he became seriously ill and spent six weeks in hospital waiting to be diagnosed to find out what exactly was wrong with him. It was during that time that our next song, the chorus sort of evolved. He said it evolved after the weeks of being in hospital, trying to work out exactly what was going on and eventually in 1957 it was published and lots of people were chasing him Eric Ledson did the music and lots of people were chasing him wanting copies of this song and this is probably I think one of the most helpful songs I know the the court Audrey could you put because you can hear me now could you put the chorus up please just the chorus please I'm in his hands Whatever the future holds, I'm in his hands. This song was inspired from a time of turmoil, a time of illness, when his 
waiting to find out what is wrong with him in a hospital bed he's writing i'm in his hands whatever the future holds i'm in his hands the days i cannot see have all been planned for me his ways best you see i'm in his hands the chorus of this song has been adapted and made a little bit more beat by I think, an American group called Transmission, but we're going to sing the original song as it was intended, just to make us reflect more that each and every one of us, no matter what we experience, the good, the bad, or the ugly, as the, the movie would tell us, but we're in God's hands. Whatever we come across, whatever we face, we're in God's hands. And at times, God will walk with us hand in hand. And at times, God will have to swoop us up and carry us. Because whatever we face, we're in God's hands and we can cope. So I would invite you to remain seated. And we're going to sing this penultimate song this evening. Thank you. Thank you and thank you to the band for coming here. And uh, my apologies now for the next song because we're doing all the verses. So, uh, seven. Seven. Okay, there's only seven. You got the rest of the night off now. But th they've done well, though, haven't they? Bless them. 
they've done well. But our next, our concluding song, our next song, is probably my favourite one. All seven verses. I think originally there's something like 11 or 13, but we have seven in the songbook, and I can't choose a verse to leave out. But this is a song that was written by William Booth in 1893. But what I love about this song is that after the Second World War, there's a story goes that there was a British serviceman who was walking through what a derelict town because it had been absolutely flattened by the Allied bombing. And he heard somebody playing a, a violin to the tune of Boundless Salvation. And what, what the story goes on, is this, this German who was playing Boundless Salvation on his violin had lived in the United States, joined the Salvation Army, then came back to Germany and was a member of the local corps, the local church, until Hitler and the Nazis banned it. And he thought, the best way I can let people know of the boundless salvation of God is to get my fiddle and to go and start playing. So imagine looking everywhere you can see derelict buildings, flattened buildings, rubble, and hearing a violin playing O Boundless Salvation. So it must have been heartwarming to, to hear that tune. I always associate this song with Ezekiel's vision from the temple and from Ezekiel 47, where the water comes out the temple and the further it goes, the deeper it gets. Because I love this last verse that says, and now, hallelujah, the rest of my days shall gladly, no sense of duty, no sense of we should, but gladly be spent in promoting his praise, who opened his bosom to part the sea of spoundless salvation for you and for me. Amazing song of testimony that's known as the founder's song in the Salvation Army. And we're going to sing all seven verses. So I apologize now. Take Tuesday night off, guys. Yeah, I know. I, I know that. They haven't Tuesday night off, so they're coming back on Wednesday instead. But thank you, guys. But we're having all seven verses. So however you want to... No, 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 you've got to milk it. Oh. We'll get there. We'll get there. But let's let's stand and sing together, shall we, friends? <laughs>
Amen. And a final benediction, friends. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace today, tomorrow, and forever. And we unite as brothers and sisters in Christ to say, Amen and Amen.